right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody to this amazing live stream. We have a bug bounty QA going on. So if you have any questions, I want you to drop the questions in the chat. So just go and drop your questions there. Don't worry, there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. And I will be providing the stupidity today. Thank you very much. I do not like that job being taken away from me. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much already for the people who have asked and why is this bootcamp live? What is this bootcamp really? This bootcamp is an extension or well, I should say webinar. This webinar is an extension of the bootcamp that we did a little bit ago. And in our bootcamp, we had some uh, questions that came up. We also had a channel. Hello, Matroska, how are you doing my friend? We also had a channel for QA, so we will be seeing, we'll be taking some questions from there. And we will also be answering some common questions that I get as well. So some FAQs, if you have questions again, let me know. And we will get started with the first one. And the first one we will answer is how to solve Mr. Rat's giveaway questions, any solutions. That's a great question, my friend. So I like to trick people, I like to deceive people, and I like to lead them on the wrong trail. Sometimes I give you something that looks like a harsh, that looks like something you should be decoding, but you really should not be decoding that at that moment. It might just be a code that you have to use somewhere on one of my courses. That can be a possibility. It can all be a possibility that I have base X encoded it. So that can be base 16, base 32, base 64, base 58, whatever base I can think of. And I can just make a really quick base X converter in JavaScript or whatever I need. And that way I have it now. It can be one time, it can be multiple times. I can add certain characters. Uh, I can add like a zero before every single group of characters. I can do a rot, a rotation cipher, where I don't use the standard alphabet, so you see everybody going rot cipher, okay, that's fine, that's perfectly good, and then you come onto this decode website, fine, descriptive, but I'm not using this alphabet, I'm using this alphabet, the custom alphabet, and then I'll give you a hint, custom alphabet, and a lot of people will not get it, which is so freaking funny, I love seeing you struggle, I'm sorry, I'm sending it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't enjoy it that much, but you guys are really awesome when you try to solve my challenges. Just know that I might double encode, I might triple encode with a certain base, um, I might do a cipher, um, I might add things in between. Those are going to be some solutions, and sometimes I just, I just tweet out random shit, looks like nothing, can just be a code as well. Just look at the hint there very, very carefully. So I hope that helped a little bit with that question. If you have more questions about that, let me know. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Cybert. Hello, Ferdis LM. Hello, Hikers Hood. Good to see you here. Another question that I've gotten is my methodology, Uncle Rat's methodology. How do I work? What do I do when I approach a new target? Well, that really depends on the target that I have in front of me. So if I have a target in front of me, that's broad scope. Let's start with broad scope, shall we? And I'm sorry if you hear a little bit of noise, but I'm just moving my laptop. Um, so for me, it's really important that you guys realize that there's two types of targets. You have broad scope and you have small scope, main application, that's what it's called. Now, I like to hunt on main application. That is where I thrive. It's where I'm really good at. And a lot of people think main application doesn't have a lot of scope because it only has one IP in scope. That is so not true. That is like, like the biggest bullshit that I've ever heard. You know what I mean? It, it's like main application has more functionality sometimes than broad scope. Why is that? Because main application goes a lot deeper. Like you can, you can explore all of the functionality. So let's take that one first. I go click around, and I'll tell you why I take it first as well. I go click around in my application. I have Burp Suite open in the background. With Burp Suite open in the background, I can do the rest of my, sh um, the rest of my stuff. So I just click around. I look at the parameters later on. But my biggest, biggest worry is that I click around first. So I do that. I just click around. That's something that I've 
I do, and then, um, for example, let's say that I have an application that I've never seen before, might take me anywhere from one day to two days to five to ten. It really depends on how long I want to take, but I don't start hacking immediately. Hacking is what I do later. And it might sound silly because, hey, you're hacking, you're a hacker, yeah, that's true. But what do hackers do? They use things in ways that they aren't intended to be used. So you need to know the intended way of using something. I will use red side here as an example. So we come to red side. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open something like Burp Suite or Zap or any man in the middle proxy. That's the very first thing that I'm going to open. Let's do that, Burp Suite opening. All right, then the very first thing after that is I set my proxy. So we go to proxy. We go to proxy settings and here we have our proxy set up properly we just have one interface why would i want more interfaces than one you might think let's say that i'm testing a web application and a mobile application and i want them to both go through burp suite well then you are going to set up another proxy listener on another port bind to port 8081 believe me you're going to want to do this and even if you're testing like two different ways of communicating that's it so even if you have android ios even if you have android web or ios web or whatever just set this up like this where you send one to one proxy and where you send the other one to the other proxy okay so very very simple why is that now later on when i'm going to filter in my http history i can filter on what proxy that was being sent to so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my scope and I just want, in this case, I'm going to use the advanced scope. I'm just going to use hexford.com here. And this is my scope currently. So now I can open up a window with my proxy. Here we have our intercept, open our browser and our intercept is off. Now red side's going to load and or at least I'm going to load it in right side. I'm going to navigate to there and I'm going to click around what is available. So first of all, I have a registration page. That's awesome. So let's just register with a random user. And then we can see what this user can do. So we're going to log in now. And by the way, if you guys are just the red side, red side does reset every 30 minutes, just so you know. And here, just by clicking around, I can already observe a very big security flaw that you're not going to find in real life. It's displaying my password on the home page. But what you might see is that an application is able to mail you your password. That's a big no-no, of course. They don't need to know your password. It needs to be encrypted in their database with a proper sold and a proper hashing mechanism. Uh, hashed even, sorry, encrypted is not the right word here. But this is something that's a problem, of course. Now, I'm just going to continue clicking around. So we have something here with contacts. There we go. We can create a new contact. Let's try that as well. And now I'm going to show you a trick. Wherever you can, use this attack vector right here. Let me post that in the chat as well. I really want you to start using this attack vector. And why is that? Because you're testing a lot of things at the exact same time. Single quote, double quote, even add a back tick in there, and you're testing SQL injections for every single one of these fields. You're testing HTML injection, you're testing CSTI, SSTI, and I can see a public or not public thing here. Oh, and I could see something jump, but here I might already have my very first hint. Now, edit item, click on that as well. So you just click on it. Whoa, that's messed up, isn't it? Well, here we're going to see a little bit later on what we want to do there. Now let's just also delete that item. And then when you're going to go to the page opener, we can apparently open a URL in here. Does it redirect us to the URL? Yep, that's a problem. Report this in your bug bounties. URLs that are redirected to, that are loaded, should be reported on properly. So that's an open redirect issue. Usually won't give you a whole lot but if the program accepts it, do report it. Only if they accept it, look well into the scope pages. Let's go for the cheese processor. We will need to make a post request here, so we will use our, um, our, po our postman later on, or our um, interceptor, our burp suite, I mean, Jesus, I couldn't come to the name. And then we have user settings right here. I'm going to submit those. 
just make a little bit of a change and you can even include that same attack vector here that we had before so we can include that we can change our name and we can even do that on registering already so let's try that okay apparently we can set zero as a last name might be an issue not security related though here we do have html injection again though so something you really need to take into account now let's go onto this checker what is this checker apparently it asks us for jwt so jwt is something that i do want to look into where is it going to be usually in a cookie or a header authentication header look more into that later contact customer support here we can send a message and again if we are going to send the same message we will see something hey look we didn't say 49 here and that's exactly what i mean they're testing so many things at the exact same time it's incredible this is a good attack factor in my opinion use your own if you don't think that this is worthy but this is just a tip that i can give you and then we still have logouts now we've thoroughly tested the application we basically done every crud action that we can create read update and delete and now we're going to explore the red side manually so we have that go to page here we don't have to investigate that anymore because it's just a page redirector so no investigation there there is a parameter url but we've already looked at that the jwt checker here here we have something different request response okay look what we got in the response we did get a jwt token here and if you guys have noticed something we will look at that later let's just go to jwt.io and then we're going to paste our jwt token so let's paste it in here oh set is admin is false okay can we make that true i don't know so let's see right and let's just paste it into the web page so we had that in our let's go back to there and we had that here we saw that in the checker right here we have that jwt oh wrong key or expired now look at the next thing that i'm going to show you so in here we have that jwt but look at what this is secret.js is that something that we have to investigate of course we will have to investigate all of the javascript files that we can find username test password test well we might be able to try that later we might have some use there but for the jwt checker not useful next up we have cookies do we have anything in the cookies here that might indicate nope nothing so on the source code of the page maybe we might have the key who knows we just have to explore it and see if we can find anything related to the key code name secret so you won't forget the jwt again look at that we have a comment so let's try that let's try that comment in our jwt checker here secret now we have to make sure that this isn't expired so i'm just going to put up the expiration date a very very long period that way i'm sure that it's not expired exp is expiration of course hey look at that that is, is problem of course we need to report that in bombardi so check your source code for everything that you can find now while i'm going through here we have this now i'm going to angular test well that already tells you enough we had our angular issue there so we might be able to go for csdi how do you prove it you look at what version of angular is specifically used here so uh, angular if i can type that properly 1.4.6 so let's look at angular 1.4.6 exploits and maybe we can find something here it seems to be very 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 vulnerable let's do csti payload all of the fix here we have xfs and angular 1.4.6 is in between here so we can use this as an attack factor and we can attack our website we have to do it in a proper browser though so we go there we go to that where was it called the customer support there we go we insert our message and we should get an alert now i am not happy with just alert i want to alert the cookies see if i can steal that session cookie. so let's try that yep steal that session cookie all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to send it over to an out of band server an out of band server that i own i'm just going to use webhook.site for now because that is my the one I use mainly. So let's look for now for cross-site scripting. And then we're going to go for steel cookies. 
and then we might find a cookie stealer through certain methods like for example loading an image this is something we can try here so we can try this cross-site scripting attack we can load in an image we'll have to do it through javascript properly though or we can do it like this right here where we're going to make a request we insert a webhook.site in there and we see if we can steal those cookies i hope that's clear because we're going to go to the next part okay so we have angular test we have assets what's in here red site.js What's in redsite.js? It seems like you might have to decode that because that seems to be obfuscated. So how do we do that? We go to a deobfuscator, which will not really help us all that much, but it will at least make it a little bit more obfuscator. It will make it a little bit more readable. So let's paste our JavaScript in here, deobfuscate that. And we wait a little bit for it to actually work. It might take a little bit. Am I even on the right side? Uh, looks like the side is glitching out. So let's paste it in here. Let's do the decode. And then we have, as you can see, something that's still not very readable. So we might have to do this ourselves. We see variable in here. This is just an array with strings, as you can see. And those strings are used in here. But we will need to use the right array. We will need to cop it, couple it to the right. Um, we will basically need to deobfuscate this properly by looking at what array we are in, what the key is. Uh, like these are the keys. Uh, these are array keys and shit like that. You really have to be properly versed in JavaScript for this. So if you're not really knowing what's going on here, don't worry. But the obfuscation, if you can do it, take the time. It just takes a lot longer. It takes a lot of time, but it's super useful. Now we have background of CSS.map. That's just that background that you see on there. On context, though, we already saw that we had a possible cross-site scripting. So let's try and push that even further. So let's go to the context. We can create a contact, we can create a new contact, and we if we enter that attack vector that we just entered before, we can see that we're going to get the cross-site scripting attack. There we go, very easy. We have at least HTML injection. So what we can do is we can create a new contact with the very same thing. Only thing is then we can add on error equals alert. So stored cross-site scripting, we're going to do that. And now we are going to see our alert pop up. That is very, very bad, of course. And also, if we go here, let's refresh the page. Oh, it didn't insert. There's something wrong there. Let's try to create a new contact, delete this item, create a new contact, get our cross site scripting attack forward. I think they're working properly, so it is in here properly. Uh, probably the equals alert is giving it some problems, but let's submit it anyway, see what we are going to get. Because we do get three attacks, but as you can see, it didn't insert this contact. So, might be a bit of a problem there, right? How will we solve this? Well, since we know we have HTML injection, we might also just have something like script alert, something along those lines, something injection variable. So, there we go. We just do script alert. Let's see if that brings something. Apparently, we do get three alerts here, and we do get three alerts on the home page. Why is this so damaging? Because we can make these items public, and then we have basically a public stored cross-site scripting, which can be very silent but deadly. Report this as is, as this is, not as, oh, I have just a cross-site scripting. Know that it's a public item. Know that it's not self-cross-site scripting know that it is also an issue and we'll look at this later that I can insert contacts to CSRF because then I can insert cross-site scripting attack vectors so if I look at this page right here I can just even see it right here so we have our contacts okay we see here a get contacts with a search term and we see edit contacts as well so edit contact and new contact. These are all related to contacts, right? So here I have a certain request. Let's go and make this into a proof of concept. So let's go to CSRF proof of concept. 
let's make it CSRF book. Ooh. And we enter the URL in here properly as well. Uh, copy URL. There we go. And now we should have basically a, cross, a CSRF proof of concept that inserts cross-site scripting. So let's click that. And yes, indeed, very, very damaging. Even if it was self cross-site scripting, we have CSRF that can insert cross-site scripting. So that is something that I watch for as well. CSRF tokens on very important stuff. And chain, 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 chain. The most complicated exploits are made of very simple change. Do this on edit contact as well. Now on delete contact, we all have identifiers here. Try to get an IDOR on this. So try to change the identifier and try to see if you can get IDORs where you see your identifiers. That's a very simple one, right? How about SQL injection? Well, there is SQL injection possible on the website, but I will leave that to you guys to find out. We have the process cheese, we have the register here, there's also SQL injection, we have user settings, but guess which we skipped? Search contact. So if we get context.php, we here we have a search term, and we can again get cross-site scripting. Now, one thing that we didn't test is that we have that login with test test. So let's just log in again with another username this time, test test. And look, he has a lot more. So let's try to do something with invoices, specifically open a new tab, go to the red side, and we can log in. I don't even, <coughs> I don't even remember that previous login crap. Uh, let's see if we can still get that username. Otherwise, yep, there we go. So we can log in as here as that username, and we can log in here as the username test test. So we have a lot of things that we can do here, like for example, this invoices. Let's go on our low project account. Yes, we can see invoices. How about creating a new invoice? Can we do that as well? Well, yes, we can create new invoices. So we definitely have broken access control issues in here as well. Something you should report and something you should be very careful about. All of the broken access control issues. I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about every every single last one of them. That's a very important distinction to make here. So if you have any trouble there, make sure that you check out my videos on broken access control because they're really going to help you. It, it's, a, it's something that people let a lot of money on the table for. They will find one broken access control, one either issue, while there's maybe seven and then they get like one duplicate for me and then the rest is for my money. That's something that you need to take very serious in bug bounties and how do you find this mostly on business to business programs so that's main app now i'm going to go to the chat real quick because there might be some questions before we go to broad scope all right so apparently holy crap okay 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 <laughs> my question is how to bypass waf we'll get do that in a second. First is Waf Wolf. Yep, then use Google to find vulnerabilities, exploit them. Thank you very much, Cybred. I really appreciate it. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jeronen? Hey, Marius. Thank you so much for joining. How can I be as good as you as buck hunting? Is there any course or anything like that can help me improve my skills? Well, courses can always help you improve your skills, but you don't need courses. Like, do it. Do it very much. I used to hunt for like eight hours a day at times, so don't think that it's gonna be easy. The thing is just that it's a combination of skill and luck. The thing is, if you play the lottery, that's a very much skill-based game. But if you are, for example, pen testing, uh, sorry, what am I saying? Lottery is a very much uh, a, a luck-based game. Pen testing is very much a skill-based game. If you combine them, if you increase your skill level and you increase your exposure to luck, you're going to get more bugs. I hope that makes sense. From the job's perspective, ECPPT EC better or OSP? Uh, OSP has much more recognition in the field. Like it's going to always be your better choice. OFSEC is very recognized, very well uh, sought after. And the practical knowledge in which is better worth preparing for. Well, you can always try CNWPP as well, which is my own certificate. Don't go to CNWPP.com. I'm just warning you guys. But CNWPP, from my end, we are making a certificate, or we have made a certificate. And it, it's very, the certificate is very, how do I put this? 
it's it's very real life it's very lifelike it's very intense you're going to go through an exam which you're going to do eight hours of hacking on but you're going to be faced with threat actors that are going to exchange information from you or try to you're going to be faced with annoying customers you're going to be faced with scope changes our we don't aim at beginners like our first certain if you really want to aim at skill I think we are the best option there because we really aim at driving you home on that um, on that on that standardization front on NIST on OSSTMM on OWASP on all of these things we really take care on driving those into the people that work with us so if you want that's just a tip if you when it comes to knowledge i just think that oscp is very aimed at network hacking and they don't take website hacking into consideration for that certificate and it's normal because it's a beginner certificate so it depends a little bit on where you want to go exactly very much thank you very much cybert i should co-host you <laughs> <coughs> um we're preparing from the jobs perspective. I mean, certs are a big investment financially and are time and effort. Yeah, the thing is, if you want a job, you will probably have to get a certificate or proof you're worth it. That's what I did, both of them basically. But you will have to definitely invest. You will have to invest in yourself. It's a big investment. I can't, one thing, if it's more practical, why is it more in the band than OSCP? Because OSCP has been around for longer. They have been doing this training part really well they're well recognized because they have a grueling 24 hour exam it's just i don't know why exactly but there are like i understand that they have a very good very good syllabus but yeah i also agree that ecc ecppt is more lifelike it's much more in my opinion much more varied than that you know i've like yeah they are very well at marketing definitely <laughs> The thing is as well that offsite their options aren't very good offensive security. So yeah. offensive security OSP buy. So if you look at what they are asking, they are asking. Uh, so you can do it annually. Apparently, there's a course and the certificate which is good for uh, 90 days of lab access, which is 15.99. Um, and then we have the fundamental content. All of this is, what the heck, dude? Like course and certificate is so much worse, Jesus. But yeah, 90 days should be more than enough. And then we have 365 days. Damn, that's freaking impressive. Like, <laughs> If you take a year to do OSCP, I think you're better off looking for something else. Let me put it that way. I think it would be better and just to, you know, but apparently there isn't even an exam attempt in this. It's just learn fundamentals. So you'll have to go with 1599 one-time payment. Oh, two and a half grand a year. I'm sorry, but this is a straight up call out to OFSEC. The two and a half grand per year built annually. Holy crap. Jesus Christ. Do people really need that? Number of exam attempts. Yeah, okay, you get unlimited fundamentals but you also get pen 103 and pen 210. Okay, gotcha, it's, it's a little bit more inclusive, but yeah. The thing is, it sucks if you have to do this your own, but apparently you can also do up to 36 monthly payments through financing with 0% APR, so that's good. Still, it's a little bit, it's it's impressive how expensive it can be. I get you where, where you're coming from. I definitely if I have 4K in hand, where should I invest my money in INE or OFSEC investing? OFSEC. I'm sorry, but they're very much more recognized. It's simple as that. I'm not an engineer and did my bachelor's in pharmacy. That's awesome, hackers hood. I did my um, high school in uh, chemistry and I was going to go to pharmacy, pharmacy but I did uh, internet instead, like, sorry, IT, internet. Yeah, or OFSEC is, is really good for jobs, but I need it. Like you're talking about LGBT version two, right? I don't like that they have like so much content included. They don't focus in INE's IGPT version two. Like they have hundreds of hours of content. And I'm not even kidding, hundreds of hours of content available. And their exam requirements aren't very clear for the second version. So it'll depend. Yeah, Port Swiggle Labs are really, really good. Thank you very much, Simon. Again, I should really host you. <laughs>
Yeah, offsec is really your go to there. Cyber is totally right. Hacker suit, um, port sugar is best for burping and most <laughs> for burping, yeah. Uh, not only what, but uh, focus on mobile. Mobile pen testing is nothing different from web pen testing. There's only a few platform specific shits that you have to take into account, but mostly it's like intercepting traffic and that's where people are failing. They don't know how to intercept traffic, especially from iOS. It sucks because in iOS, you really need to get like really freaking out. It sucks in iOS, in my opinion. You really need to get the right equipment. It's expensive as hell. So yeah, be very careful there if you go into mobile. <laughs> Let's see, anything else? Um, the brother that I have done, David Blum, a long 100 hour plus course, networking basics from Udemy. Um, not really at this time, but maybe I'll get back to you on that hacker suit with another video because I've been getting that request a lot. Any plan on doing GraphQL? I want to include GraphQL in my bug bounty course. I'm refreshing my bug bounty course to include new vulnerabilities, to basically uh, refresh the old vulnerabilities with new labs that I have. So I'm going to upgrade it and it's going to be in there. Burp Suite and OSZEP. Sorry, what do you mean, Ricardo? And uh, navigate anonymously? Yeah, they can indeed, but crawling, I would advise against it for bug bounties. Crawling is not really a good idea, just so you know. Yeah, C8 is also, CH is also pretty good, uh, especially with their new exam, it's better. It's a lot better than it used to be, let me put it that way. Thank you very much, Marius, really appreciate it. Certified network and website pen testing professional, Charlie, a uh, Charizard. Um, and then we also include some API pen testing in there just to make it fun, you know, just to, just so you can say, I know how to pen test an API, to the very least. Focus on cyber kills, you know, OWASP top 10 web API metal. Yeah, and also cyber, focus on the OWASP web security testing guide. Like a lot of people focus on the OWASP top 10, but the web security testing guide is basically one of my favorite go-to things because it covers the entire software development life cycle from source code reviews to manual inspections to threat modeling to actual pen testing to what to do after that publication security testing and also focus on PTES. PTES is a pen testing uh, execution standard and it's open source we use it a lot in our company because it's great for low level assignments basically smaller ones and shit like that that's where PTES really shines so that's a great one another one I can recommend is OSSTMM open source uh, security testing methodology I always have to speak I always have to speak um, and cheat a little bit but this is much more for organizations identify the holes in your organizations identify the security issues identify the limitations and then you're going to identify coverage so and then another one that you can also focus on is make mist 800-115 that's a great document for standardization go through it if you have some time it's a really good document for standardization basically so those are things you can focus on. I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, thank you, Uncle. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and the viewers are really tired. Yeah, I'm tired as well. I will not stay for too much longer. This is recorded. You can look it back. So no worries about that. It will be on the channel as soon as possible. How much an average bug hunters get monthly? You don't think monthly as a bug hunter. <coughs> if you're doing this full time, you start to think in three month periods because you get maybe like a big buck and then you might get nothing for two months and you get really consistent mediums for two months. That That's how you think. You save a lot more. You're much more conservative with your money. You don't really think in months, April. Uh, sorry, Abdel Raham. It, it's just not that way. Um, I will do some earlier live sessions as well. This one was a little bit late because my daughter got home a little bit late, so I had to put her to bed, but I will be doing a lot more early sessions. Hey, Motivational, hope you're doing well. Can you use automation with the exploits to the endpoints, or is it better if you scan a website manually and it's the exploit in every endpoint? Well, Motivational, here what I'm doing, slow manual exploration is best, but if you have a broad scope, 
there you can best automate things. And there's like a certain way of automating that I do that I love for Broadscope, where I automatically scan all of the subdomains that I have from previous bug bounty programs with Nuclear if I make a new template. And if I get a new domain, I scan it with all of the templates that I have. So I hope that helps a little bit, but I will share like a broad scope. I will share a coupon for a broad scope bug bounty guide with like 80% off. So feel free to go for that. Um, if you guys are interested in the upcoming cross-site scripting bootcamp where we're going to explore cross-site scripting fully, but like we've been doing now, but like from start, from very basics, if you've never done a cross-site scripting attack before until actually exploiting, and you'll be participating. So if you're interested in that, it's also on the website. I'll throw up a coupon code for that as well. And then you guys, oh, I have already thrown up a coupon code. Let me copy that link address. So if anybody wants to join, all welcome to. Um, let me, ooh, apparently it doesn't let me paste that. That's unfortunate. Oh. Because it's a YouTube video, all right, that's stupid, but that's okay, there we go. So we can just paste that coupon here. I give you guys 60% off even, so if you're in this bootcamp, feel free to come along. I mean, in this call, of course, and feel free to come along. Let's see what else we have. Uh, we'll think about it. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, very much. What's the, what's the best certification training for cybersecurity graduate? Well, Sam, what I basically like to do for cybersecurity graduates, it depends. OSCP is one of the best ones to get in there and actually get value from your money. OSCP is going to be your number one there. So if you can go to OSCP there, that's going to be very awesome. That's going to be your stepping stone into getting a pen testing job. Certified ethical hacker is also good, but it's more like a defending job there. So it really depends on where you want to go. Any hard resources to understand web applications, from its backend, how to stand with all languages or together, what's an API and all. RDX, my friend, make it, make it. That's how I learn all of these issues. I make them into labs. So if you guys are ever bored and you want to hack some labs, I'm going to give you a link, hexproof.com slash labs. And I just learn it by making it. That's how I learn it. So I just do it, I make an API, I try to see how it works on the back end, and that's my way of working. You are just great. Keep on going and interesting and all the videos like this. Thank you very much, Ankit. You made me smile from ear to ear. Thank you very much, James Beers. Really appreciate you being here as well, by the way, my friend. If you guys didn't know yet, James Beers has a channel as well, a Twitch channel. I don't know if he still streams at the moment but he has a stream of CNWPP exams. He was able to live stream the exam. He was allowed to. So if you want to go check it out, feel free to, and James, feel free to link your socials as well, of course. Hey, Medusa, Botnet is back, guys, and pirated software for friends who weren't capabilities. <laughs> Again, fuck, I thought we loved that shit. <laughs> Uh, let's see, RDX. Well, my friend, I always do some giveaways as well for my bootcamp. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned on my Twitter channel. If anyone's going to Blue Team or SSC, uh, well, CEH is better for that, in my opinion, if you want to go into more Blue Teaming stuff. And there's always more work. And as an SSC, you will find more easier work. But it's shitty work sometimes. You have to realize that. You'll be going through logs all freaking day. Like all day from day to end. And then you'll be talking to customers. And sometimes you get like a peak in work. And sometimes you have nothing to do. So think about that. But it's, I, it's, it's definitely a great idea. Because you'll have a lot more work opportunities there. And also opportunities to grow to team managers and stuff like that. Dylan, any thoughts on PNPT? I heard it's good to pursue prior to OSCP. I think PNPT is an excellent choice, my friends. PNPT, I love CyberMentor. Um, and basically, PNPT, if you're thinking of going for a certificate, the only problem with PNPT is that it doesn't have as much recognition. But here you can say that it's only $300 for the voucher and with training $399. And guess what? He also has career services now. It's more expensive, but I can vouch for him that those career services are worth it. 
This gives you three hours of training extra, resume review, real-time mock interview, and the employer network access. That's going to be your most important one. That's a very important one, that employer network access, because networking is everything in this field, everything. But PNPT, his training is so excellent, his syllabus is really good, and in my opinion, it's getting there, it's getting recognized in the industry. One thing that CNWPP has, though, and that you guys might like, is if you join CNWPP, right now it's only $210 still, but if you join CNWPP, you get assigned a personal coach if you want, and you are expected to work then. You're expected to give them your working schedule when you start, when you want to train, all of that shit, when you want to uh, do exercises. <laughs> You're expected to work with them, to give them your training schedule so they know exactly how you're working. And they will egg you on. I will egg you on. You guys should see some of my webinars. I egg people on like crazy. And that might seem a little bit sadistic. But you need to get used to that pressure as soon as you can. Because this is a very high pressure environment to pen test in. Your responsibilities are enormous in this field, and a lot of people don't realize this. They just come into work to do their pen testing, and they do their checklists, and they think, oh, I just go checklist after checklist after checklist. But no, it's much more than that. You're securing a company. You need to keep your head in the game. Just a little bit of an extra there. I need to bring on that pressure. I don't do it in all of them, by the way, but sometimes I do. What else questions do we have? Very good question, by the way. Thank you very much, Dylan. Um, yeah. Right now, I, I'm not sure about the field right now, so maybe it's more difficult. I see that Darius said it's more difficult to find a job right now. Might be. Um, I th in my opinion, from what I've heard, it's easier to get a job there. But it's also it's hard to get good people. So if you're a good person, if you work hard, it's always easier to get a job if you solicitate like 50 companies or versus five for somebody that's lazy a week you're much more inclined to get a job than somebody who doesn't do that so that's of course a given how much time does it take to become zero to buck hunter for 15 year old boy <coughs> kapil learn the basics first you have time my friend you have time enjoy your time I was like you, I was always working, even when I was 15 years old, I was always working and doing shit and I was thinking about, oh, if the black hole, if time slows down in the black hole, oh, that's really cool because then you can sort of create a time machine where you go very forward in time and then you can make the earth and, you know, that's what I was doing, bullshit like that instead of playing games. Should have done that more. <laughs> uh, let's see. <coughs> We see here Darius saying, uh, regardless of the industry, it's impossible to get a job because of tech layoffs and lower job. It depends. It really depends. I don't really agree with that. I mean, it's harder. Impossible is a very harsh word, I think, especially for finding a job. Like, it's harder, but if you are very, very driven, you're much more, much more, well... It, it, there might be a lot of layoffs, let me put it that way. But security is something that's all from all ages. Everybody's going to need security forever. It's something that you are you can't mess with if you invest in the field. Future, yeah, <laughs> your future co-host, Cybert. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. <laughs> that's cool, Cybert. Let's do that. Let's arrange that. Let, I'll have my assistant contact your assistant. Is that okay? <laughs> How to find internships as international students. Solicit yourself. Just make yourself visible. Hey, this is me. Build a blog, build a website, um, help other people. Make sure that you are visible, that you're visible online. That way your future potential employer will also be able to judge you more easily. So that's the tip I can give you there. And also just solicit yourself to companies. Hey, my name is, I'm a very driven worker. Here's my resume. If you have any internships available, I would love to hear from you. If you don't have any, perfectly fine. Thank you very much. You could chat GPT. Please write an email asking if the company has an internship position 
available. Uh, pop up. There we go. <laughs> Dear hiring manager, I hope this email finds you well. I'm hiring to inquire about any internship opportunities that may be available at your company. As blah, 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 I am eager to gain hands-on experience in the industry that... In <laughs> How good is this shit, man? I fucking love chat GPT. <coughs> Do you have online practice labs? Well, you can go to github.com slash dxssrat, dxssrat. Uh, we have certain things like we have contracts. You can find the vulnerabilities in these contracts. Please do not use these contracts in main applications and production because they're vulnerable as fuck. <laughs> Just so you know, but if you go to my own GitHub, here we go. I also have a GitHub for my labs that should be public. Ah, I give you service for Linux. We call it in. Sorry about that. <laughs> Everybody who knows Dutch knows what I was just saying. Everybody who doesn't is going to be wondering, like, what the fuck did that morning just say? But I should have Uncle's Labs. There we go. And not everything's on here, but you can download some labs. You can host them yourself. It's simple PHP. Very simple PHP. So there we go. And then, of course, we also have expert.com slash blogs slash blog that should be and here we have other shit as well if you guys don't have an idea of the shit i have available let me give you a clue let me give you an introduction it, it's awesome like i have stuff available for you guys no matter what you want it's available <laughs> that's basically it so here we have some blogs that I've been posting, some examples, but what I'm really after is, let's see if we still have it on here. No, we don't. Um, but, but, but that's okay, though. Whoa, where is it? <clears throat> I will give you guys a link to Badabook. You guys will love Badabook. So, where is it? Badabook. Here we go, badabook.ova. Let's give you guys a link to badabook. <laughs> if Orgus is in here, he will know what kind of torture I am bestowing upon you. But yeah, oh, is the link set up correctly? Because sometimes, yep, anyone with a link can view. You guys are going to love badabook, built by some of the most professional builders that I have known. You guys might know them, Andreas and the Art42, known from Osiris, known from a whole bunch of machines on try hack me or challenges i should say um they have built a bunch of machines for you and now you are up to but a book thank you very much marius um <laughs> i really appreciate it marius is like one of the people that uh, like helps us a lot and he like he's very knowledgeable in these types of exams as you if you go to his uh linkedin you will see that he has a ton of certifications and exams taken in this field and we really try to make it unique we can't give too much away of course we will give away just enough to make you curious but yeah it's a totally different story than what you've had before let me put it that way how is the web app standing i understand domains are hosting but i'm confused at getting all the things together one teacher says js for front end one teacher says sql for databases but I'm not able to understand how to communicate together at the back end in dev. Well, my friend, let me quickly go and give you some explanations about how website works. So let's make a new diagram empty, make it, call it, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> and here we have a normal computer. The computer is going to ask, okay, I need to make a request to, ooh, that's a shitty computer, there we go. So we have a computer, computer needs to make a website request. So we have a server in there as well. Your server will host the website. That's one thing, you need a website. So how do we communicate? Through the internet. So let's open up a cloud as well. And this is going to be your internet here. So you have a request being made to the internet, get me that website, get website. There we go, very simple. And it's going to go to here. So this server might have a website on it, might have a database on it. Let's do that for simplicity, website DB. What does a website consist of? You might be wondering. Well, a website consists of a front end and a back end. A front end is what I see on my computer. Back end is all the communication on the server. 
So we get our front end here. Okay, very simple. Front end. What can that consist of? That's what called a technology stack. Remember that word very well, technology stack. What is our tech stack of the website made of? So we might have Apache as a web server. We might have AngularJS as a front end templating engine, JavaScript front end. But here comes the clue. We might also have Ninja.js for our Ninja, I think it's Ninja.js. I'm meaning the backend templating engine. That's what I'm referring to in this case. So we have a front end bed, a templating engine, back end templating engine. We use HTML to show you things. We cover that with CSS to make it pretty and JavaScript to make it interactive. If we talk about Node.js, we are talking about this right here. And they made Node.js available JavaScript for servers, basically. So some people had a crazy idea hey we look at this javascript we need to make this for websites and bam 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 next thing you know you have node.js node packet manager which is npm and it's really useful but really hard to understand sometimes all of these technology stacks how they fit together you have database systems like mysql and that database might contain data that gets served but you also have no sql databases sql list databases which are just file databases. You can put things in a JSON format. There's all kinds of different solutions and options here. So that was just a quick overview, but just look back at it and I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, what about the remote jobs for pen testers, Danish? It's really, really hard to get remote. How do I fucking trust you? You're on the other side of the world. How do I trust you? So remote is really hard to get. Uh, why do you need a job when you can hack? <laughs> yeah, just spread some malware everywhere, right? Let's just, just do that and that's just some ransomware well read it. No, please don't do that. We are ethical. I'm doing this to secure companies. That's why I'm doing this. Be proactive, guys, and show your readiness to learn. Very, very true, Marius. Approach a company even if you don't have any openings. Yep, that's how I got one of my some of my first jobs, basically. Okay, let's do it. I will contact you regarding this on Twitter. Sounds good, Cybert. Sounds good. Send me an email to info at the .com. And please include Marius at the .com. At the .com And info at the .com. I cannot promise a thing, but when I have time, let me know. These are email addresses. Look forward to hearing from you. Black Hat Motivational Speaker. Name suggestions. Motivational. Hackers who motivational, so I have a problem with motivational shit. I looked up to Jordan Peterson. I know he makes mistakes and who he says dumb shit, believe me, he says the dumb shit sometimes. And he keeps saying, clean your room, clean your fucking room. He's obsessed with it, but it helps me. It helps me because I have ADHD, I have autism. I look up to the guy from start to finish. He is one of my heroes and I know that he makes some dumb mistakes. He needs some dumb statements sometimes. That's okay. All right, so who is, our, who is my motivational hero? Him, of course. Him is, he, look up his motivational speeches, they're very, very powerful. And there's this guy in the military, I don't remember his name, but he's fucking insane. Like, he doesn't have a limit, like, <laughs> he just keeps on pushing, and he's also very good to listen to for motivational stuff. There's some really, really strange suggestions in there, maybe, but uh, who was, who else was that? Um, I look up motivational speeches as well sometimes, by the way. It's just very good for me. So you can, this one, Morgan Freeman, that's the guy. Dude, he's so good, Morgan Freeman. Like, Jesus, listen to some of his stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, I opened my music there. That's okay, though. Generation before ChatGPT, learn grammar for professional environment. Generation after, just type it in, AI will generate suitable email. Yes. <laughs> you have no idea how much I use AI in my work, bro. You have no idea. Uh, yeah, and it can just automate your freaking hacking as well. It will write you scripts. It doesn't give a shit as long as you use the right syntax. And this stream is gonna get demonetized like crazy because I'm swearing like a asshole. Uh, nothing's wrong in using ChatGPT instead of seeing lazy say automation. <laughs> Guys, I think we've entered a new era in ChatGPT and I think we just don't know it yet. You know why? Because AI right now is generative. 
it makes new things. That's something that we hadn't had before and it's going fast. It's really integrating everything that we have. So learn how to use it for ethical hacking purposes. That's all I can say about that. It's your best investment. AI is going to explode in my opinion. That's just my opinion, of course. The opinion of a stupid rat. Could you make a tutorial on um, damn vulnerable web application and go over different security levels? No one has reflected the success with high security level. Let's see if we have DV, DV, if we have it hosted somewhere. Hey, let's see, Von Hub has it, but that's not what I want. It is, this one has it. Is this one hosted? I think this one was hosted. Test drive. Nope. Uh, host it. If not, I can have it on my server. It's no problem. Damn vulnerable web application on try hack me. Do we need to? Uh, oh fuck! Of course, I don't know my. Uh, is it hosted anywhere? Let's see. Otherwise, I will just spin it up myself. Send a link. Lab link. So there is a lab link, but we might have to sign in. We need to create a few. Well, I'm not gonna bother right now too much with it, but I can definitely do time vulnerable web application. Marius, can you please make a ticket in the content creation? So uh, in a content creation project. So it's just for DVWA, the latest version. Modern problems are definitely, definitely hackers who would totally agree with you. What to write in a pen test report? Well, 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 my friends, aren't you in luck there? Aren't you in luck there? Slash blog. And a pen test report example. Does this help? This is a very basic one. Expand this to yourself. What I've always found is that the ones you find online are way too much, way too much information. You don't need that. You need something like this where it's very basic and then you can build upon it because it's overwhelming and you might need a lot of pages for your report. You might need a lot of them. And I think we even updated our report recently. Let me go to Confluence real quick. Uh, I think we even updated our reports recently, our report template. We have a bug report template. We have a pen test report template. So. Here you can see that all of the names of my clients are out of here, so I can easily share this with you guys. Um, but there are restrictions on this page. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export this to a PDF file and I will upload it to my shared drives. So here we go, uh, public items. And we will download that for you and share it with you as well because we are very much about sharing our information and not hogging it like other companies. Is that a good idea? I don't know. Might be the dumbest shit I've ever done, but I don't care. I do it anyway. Uh, let's see. So up oh, there we go. Let's share this. And let's go to anyone with link. Copy it. Done. And you guys can have it. There you go. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, how do you get entry-level job without certification? Can you describe CSRF token authentication briefly? Okay, so for CSRF, cross-site request forgery. We're going to make a request from our website to the website that we're attacking. And if you're going to click on my website, which I'm going to disguise as click here to win a million dollars. So right now, what I have now is an HTML file in my downloads. In this HTML file, I can edit it. And I can say, OK, all of these fields, you see a lot of fields here, like first name, uh, input, which is say uh, first name. It's going to be hidden. Then we have here last name. It's going to be hidden. And guess what? This email is going to be, it's also going to be hidden. And then we're just going to put a field here that is not hidden and which order even better we're just going to do it like this there we go and then we have our input type is submit okay perfect there we go value is this nope we're going to say value click here here to get the free course from uncle rat 
And now I'm going to host this on my own website. So imagine that I'm just hosting this on my website. And I'll send you this link. I will even make that first name, last name. Shit, that's something we don't need. So first name, last name. Gone. There we go. We just go back to the website. We refresh it. You see nothing. Click here to get a free course from Uncle Red. And bam, you're infected. Because you've clicked on my website. And I've sent a cross-site scripting attack to here. That's SSCSRF, not per se the cross-site scripting, but I am sending a request from my website to this website. That's a CSRF vulnerability. Token, CSRF token, is basically meant to be a unique token that is bound to your session, and I don't know your token, so if that token exists and I make a request from my website, it's gonna be without that token because I don't know it, and my attack is never going to work. Hope that helps, my friend. I said if you're from India, you have to be burn after a century, then you can expect it. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, Hector Stewart. Let's say we have a website using React.js and Node.js. Which side will you target first? The business logic website. Uh, the business logic side of it, the border connects control. I don't care about front end. I don't give a shit about front end, my friends. Like front end is just front end to be front end. It's supposed to protect the user from their own stupidity. I care about API interactions. I care about website server interactions, about man in the middle attacks, uh, man in the middle interactions, capturing my requests and all of that stuff. That's what I care about. Not React.js and Node.js. I will look at what version of React it is and what version of Node it is and see if I can find any exploits specific to those versions. But if I can't, that's very unfortunate. I'll move on really quickly, believe me. Good night, Cybert. I will go to bed as well very soon. Contact me. I would love to hear from you. I finished all required top support, Swigger Academy, and to be honest, a THB Actibox. And in Hacker for One, I cannot find any vulnerabilities. Yeah, but it's because you're training in a training environment, aren't you? You aren't really training in a real environment. That's why I've created Red Side. It's bigger, it's more expensive. There are vulnerabilities in there. There are 40 at least, but they are spread out. You can't really find them easily it's just something that i've made red site for specifically and guess what i can even control the exploits active on red site how cool is that cool right um let's see here who will co-host us nobody anymore because i'm gonna go to bed as well my friend <laughs> seriously my question was so confused and eat my brain sir but you explained it so simply now that i'm all clear Susie, you are a great tournament throughout the century war you see <laughs> thank you very much sir i really appreciate it rdx you guys are making me blush like crazy and thank you as well hacker root hackers root all right, my friends, I am think I'm going to go to bed, but I love doing these sessions because we've already been going for an hour and it seems to me like only five minutes have passed, but I still need to eat something. I still need to go to bed and I still need to get up tomorrow to give a training and I'm going to fucking love it. I look so forward to it. It's going to be a training live with like live classes and in a building and not at home. I look forward to it so much, my friends. Thank you so much. I will do this a lot more and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, amazing hackers. I love you so much.